Hello. Welcome to Pretend I'm Dumb About Star Wars, episode two. That, my friends, is the Andrew Allen Trio, and you have got to check out andrewallentrio.com if you haven't already. Uh, if for no other reason than live from the cantina, the Star Wars Jazz Tribute album. Uh, but he's also got Star Trek stuff up there and all kinds of cool stuff. So go check that out. Thank you, Andrew Allen, for letting us use your music. Pretend I'm Dumb About Star Wars is myself, Tom Merritt, pretending that I don't know anything about Star Wars. Now, I do know things about Star Wars. I'm I'm not trying to lie. I, I'm not <laughs> I'm not not really trying to convince you that I don't know anything. Uh, as you'll see, I have a few Star Wars things around. But the idea is what if I didn't know anything about Star Wars, and I looked at it, and I said, well, episode one, I will watch this one first. A few people are like, you should start with episode four. Other people are like, you should do the machete order. Those are all great ideas. You're absolutely right. Maybe watching them in the film order is exactly what you should do. It's not what I'm doing, though. Uh, what I'm doing is, is just for kicks. Trying to approach it as if, okay, I watched episode one last week, as if it were like a weekly show, and I learned about Special Boy and Comic Relief and all those sorts of folks. And so now I'm, I'm tuning in for episode two. Pretend I'm dumb. What would I find out? Okay, my guess, based on the title, episode two, Attack of the Clones, is that the bad robe guy, the one surviving one from the last episode, makes the clones and then attacks Naboo because that was kind of our good guy's section in the last episode or maybe they protect the republic republic were also good guys uh and maybe a clone of the other bad robe guy who died the red faced guy with the horns comes back i don't know uh but but yes clones are going to attack that is what i think going into this uh so we start off we get more text uh something about count dooku some separatists i don't know what's going on uh and uh boom so, so wait a minute. If I'm reading the text right, the separatists haven't left. They intend to leave. So this is all about some people who are like, I don't know. I don't know if we like this Republic anymore. I mean, planets get surrounded by federations for no reasons in episode one. I kind of think the separatists might have a point here. Anyway, so we start off uh, uh, and young Amidala, uh, she's a senator. Why isn't she a queen? We'll find out. Also, if a bunch of senators say they want to leave uh, the Senate, is the right response to vote on an army? Oh, you want to leave the Senate, huh? I mean, I guess that's the Civil War story a little bit, but it uh, does seem a little bit out of place. But I get it. I get it. Dooku is bad. Amidala is good. Okay, into Coruscant. Coruscant rocks. Cool planet, cool ships. Great sci-fi. I love Coruscant. Uh, I even know the name by now because they, they, they've said it enough. And then Robot and Patchy Guy show up. I can't remember. Was Patchy Guy in the last episode? I know she had a guy with her. Did he have a patch? Anyway. Uh, pulling the old decoy. Oh, Amidala. She loves to pull herself off a decoy. Although this time, she got her decoy killed. So it must be really hard to get insurance if you're Amidala. Uh, but I'm, I'm a little confused. Uh, so the Jedi are pulled too thin. They 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 can't they can't protect the republic if there's a war because what they're just policemen. I'm a little confused by that. Uh, but uh, then then we move pretty quickly into Jedi are strapped, so let's assign some Jedi to protect one senator. Now now later it becomes clear that this senator Senator Amidala is key to voting for or against the war. She's very persuasive and influential, so I get that. And that makes sense. She was queen of Naboo. She probably got famous after that whole thing. Uh, but still, you so you assigned two Jedi to protect one senator? We're strapped, but we're going to use two of you guys to protect them. Okay. Uh, so we need a reason to bring the trainee back in. Trainee from last time, Kenobi. Uh, I think we know his name now. And the trainee has a trainee. That's a cool thing, right? He has taken on his own. Um it takes a little while for us to realize that, well, look at that. Special boy is all grown up. He's not special. Well, he's probably still special, but he's not a boy anymore. He's, he's a young man. Uh, and, oh, Comic Relief is back. That's all right. 
he's fine. He, Misa's so happy to see him. Uh, wow. Awkward boy is what we see when he first meets Amidala and like f- flat out starts hitting on her. <laughs> he is a beautiful, awkward trainee. Also kind of rude right off the bat. And this is going to be something I see through the rest of the episode. Uh, wow. But special trainee boy is right. Uh, the assignment is odd. Uh, uh, man, is it uncomfortable with him arguing with Kenobi right in front of everybody? Annie, as everybody keeps calling him, is rude. He is a rude young man. But boy, does he like his Amidala. Okay, uh, he creeps out, Amidala. You can tell. Amidala's like, uh, okay, Annie, I remember you when you were little. Okay, so stop being so creepy. Uh, let's get to the good times, though. Assassination, right? Uh, so the assassination on the the platform at the beginning of the movie didn't pay. So we're back into action. Assassination by centipede. I think this is cool. I like this idea. Uh, nice laser sword work by Annie when he jumps in, takes out the centipedes. A couple of jumps. Uh, and then, of course, Kenobi jumping out the window. I'm getting this. This is going to be a moving movie. This is going to be an action movie. I like it. Uh, I don't know why the bot was still hanging around outside the window, but whatever. Uh, Nice cars. We got a nice chase scene. Kenobi looks like toast. Uh, The dialogue could go away. Like, they're just kind of bickering at each other, and it's and it kind of interrupts the chase scene. But otherwise, the chase scene is amazing. Uh, going through the streets of Coruscant, or the streets, the air corridors of Coruscant, uh, Coruscant I don't know what you call it. Um, I liked that they called the assassin he when they didn't know, even though we knew it was a she. Uh, so many jumping out of cars and landing crazy stunts. We even get to land on the streets. We get to see some street scenes, some great aliens. Reminded me of the desert city from episode one, except we're in a city. So we get to see different kinds of aliens and different kinds of environments. But man, Kenobi just nag, nag, nag. Yeah, I don't know. Anakin, you should do this. You should do that. You mind your feelings all the time. It's kind of no wonder Anakin's a little bit of a piss ant in this movie. Uh, I do love the alien sports bar. I was fascinated with the little alien sports up there on on the wall. Uh, again, gave you a real sense of being in, a, in another galaxy. The only thing that bugged me is why, if she was a changeling, and he's like, I, th- I kind of think she was a changeling because I saw her face flash for a second. I don't know why her face flashed, but whatever. Why didn't she just change in the bar? Just change into looking like somebody else. They're hunting for you in a big credit bar. Change into a, like a little tiny thing. They'll never find you. Anyway, uh, so the Jedi are, do act like police. A little bit of a of a detective. Like nothing to see here. Jedi business. Flashing my Jedi badge. Uh, and uh, then we see a rocket guy. And I'm like, oh, then now, all right, that's cool. Killed her before she could tell anything. Smart move. Nice mystery. So this is going to be a mystery story. A film noir mystery story who's trying to assassinate the senator and keep her from voting against war will she save the galaxy from war okay i'm getting it i'm into it it's a good story uh still wasting a jedi protecting one senator though and i'm a little confused why they assign oh here's a trainee who's kind of rude and doesn't really know anything and has a past history with her and is real creepy around her we'll assign her uh him oh but first trainee can you go speak to the chancellor like, why would you have the trainee do that? You would assign that to someone more responsible. And also the chancellor, chancellor is kind of creepy. He knew way too much about the Jedi. Um, but then the council says, well, Anakin is still special, even though he's not tiny anymore. We trust him, but we think he's arrogant. And also there's a prophecy about him. Well, I kind of remember that from episode one. You know, bring balance. Maybe he's the one who brings balance to the force. I guess he brings balance to the force. This doesn't play into the rest of the story, by the way. They just kind of throw it out there again. So I don't know. I guess it's not really that important, although it seems like a prophecy about Bell. Anyway, um, Kenobi is the flawed one. Wait, Kenobi is the flawed one? Isn't, and now that's what uh, Green Guy says. <laughs> He's like, maybe you're the flawed one. You like It's like they love Annie for some reason. Makes no sense. Okay. Now... <laughs> Now Amidala leaves and is like, hey, comic relief, can you fill in for me as senator? Sure, why not? He could be a general of the army in the last episode, so I guess we're going to get a bunch more of him. Uh, I know the perfect place to hide. 
says Amidala. I'll go back to Naboo. No one will think to look for me there. Okay, that doesn't make any sense. And then Kenobi and Anakin just fight, fight, fight. I mean, they hate each other. They never say anything nice to each other. So I guess we're setting up for some kind of conflict uh, between those two. Because, man, bicker, bicker, bicker. Also, Annie creeps Ms. Amidala out. You can tell. Every, she's like trying to have a normal conversation. But you're so dreamy. Uh, step off, Annie. And then Patchy Guy isn't even going with him. They're just going to send the junior Jedi, but not not her own security? Because that's less uh, uh, obvious. Oh, it's uh, someone who looks a little like that pivotal Senator Amidala with an obvious Jedi trainee because he's got a weird pigtail. Uh, well, uh, I, I don't know who they are at all. All right, then we get to what I consider the good part of, of this episode, which is the film noir story. So Kenobi goes to the Alien Diner. I love this. I love the Alien Diner. I love Dex. Dex is his name. The the cook. I love the robot waitress. Good film noir trope. The sort of like, have you ever seen this? Oh, well, your droids wouldn't be able to know what this is. Uh, we find out Rocket Guy must be a clone uh, from Camino. They're the cloners. They do cloning. So maybe, maybe... There's a ton of Rocket Guy. There's maybe a bunch of these Rocket Guys all over the place. Which one was it? Maybe the Assassin, the Changeling, was a Rocket Guy. Uh, I I do like the droids it can't think. Yeah, you can't think like us. Hmm, a little droid prejudice. We'll see that again, too. Uh, then Kenobi goes to the library. I love the library set. We get a nice snooty librarian. Don't you tell me where your planet's supposed to be. If it's not in the archives, it doesn't exist. Uh, but we know it exists, right? We're like, well, come on. This, the Dex, you know, said Rocket Guy came from there. So, okay, we know it has to exist. More pro- droid prejudice on the bus, by the way, when uh, R2 tries to get a little, I don't know, it was coffee, a little extra food or something. Uh, so I'm thinking, oh, we're going to get a little droid prejudice story going on in here. Cute baby training. Kenobi shows up and uh, Green Guy is... Uh, is training all the young Jedi kids. That was that was kind of cute. And then they figure out what we all knew, which is like, oh, well, this blank space is probably where your planet is. Why don't you go there? All right. Uh, then the first thing you do when you're hiding out on your home planet where everyone might think to look at you is to go straight to a high-profile meeting with the new queen <laughs> and advisor. Uh, and apparently the Federation is back. We haven't seen them or heard of them. We heard about Separatists. But the Federation... The weird guys from the last movie. I still don't trust the bearded guy. Uh, he's back, but I guess he's not bad. And then Annie just is like contradicts Senator Amidala in front of the queen. Well, hold on there a minute, Missy. He is so rude. What an ass. All right. Uh, back to Kenobi. The good part of the story. Cool ship with the separating thing where he can leave the ring in orbit and then take the ship down to the surface. I love that. I uh, love the rain planet. Just beautiful. Love the worlds. Um, more mystery. We get gray aliens. They look like big, thin grays, like right out of Close Encounters. And then, then the super mystery. Who is Sifidius? We heard the name Sidious bandied about in the last episode. Is this a pseudonym or something? Uh, but then they think Sifidius is, an, is a Jedi because they're like, oh, Master Jedi Kenobi, thank you for coming. We've got, we've got clones for you. Uh, we, we made this clone army for the Republic. Clone army? Okay. Uh, that's a mystery. Who really wanted this clone army? Who did they really want it for? Back to Naboo. Naboo is pretty. I like that they're in the lake house. It's gorgeous. But Wow. Just standing there at that balcony, uh, Annie being creep-tastic, slap him, Amidala. Oh, no, you did not just kiss him. Out of nowhere. Okay, thank God she she comes back to her senses quickly. I shouldn't have done that. I don't know why you did that in the first place. But yes, I have no idea where this story is going at this point. But the clone mystery is cool. I'm back to that. Uh... So the bounty hunter, they mention a bounty hunter on on the clone planet, and it's Rocket Guy. You know it's Rocket Guy. By the way, his name's Django Fett, we find out. Uh, unfortunately, we then go back to Naboo, and they're picnicking now. 
he is not likable ever. Uh, that field scene is just weird. I am not convinced of anything. Back to the clone mystery. Good. Uh, I like the apartment where Rocket Guy lives. It's kind of like a Raymond Chandler thing. Oh, we got Mr. Kenobi. Oh, I know who you are. You know who I am because you were you were shooting that changeling when I was looking over her about to get the answers. We know. We both know what's going on. That's a great scene. Uh, and then he says, I was hired by Lord Tyrannus. Who, ha- who is Tyrannus? So Tyrannus hired Rocket Guy to go be a clone model for the Kaminoans who think they're doing it for the Jedi. Some guy named Sifidius, Tyrannus, Tyrant. It's bad robe guys. You know it's bad robe guys. They're going to get this clone army unless Kenobi can stop them. All right, then we hear the term lightsaber referring to the laser sword. So now I'm confused. Is it a lightsaber or is it a laser sword? Laser sword sounds cooler to me. Uh, Then we're back to Naboo and it's about flirty dinners and a fireplace. And I guess maybe she's got um, cabin fever or um, Stockholm Syndrome, Uh, but she starts to be desperate. But okay, Uh, it was a really stupid way to get here, but I get it. It's a forbidden love. Man, is he creepy. Amidala still makes some sense, though, and talks him down. We can't do this, partly because you're creepy. She doesn't say that, but we know. We know that's what she means. And also because you're a Jedi. And as you said before, Jedi can't get attachments. So, therefore, no attachments. We're all safe, right? Okay, back to the rain planet. Uh, and then Kenobi makes the call from outside the ship. If it were raining like that, I'd make the call from the, in the ship. But then again, I'm not a Jedi. Uh Okay, so then we find out that the Jedi are getting weak in their powers. That starts to explain, okay, maybe you can't protect the galaxy, uh, not because you're spread too thin in numbers, but like your your mystical powers are getting weak. That's an interesting mystery too. Uh, Then we're back to Naboo, and uh, Anakin has a clear nightmare, then tells them, oh, I don't have nightmares. They have Jedi nightmares, I bet. No? Okay. Uh, he dreams of his mom. So now we have a plot point. He's dream- He's afraid his mom's going to die. He's seen visions of his mom dying. We remember his mom from episode one. Uh, not. <laughs> we're not going to see his dad, apparently, but we remember his mom. So he needs to go get her. He's kind of just going to abandon Amidala, which I, like, I kind of believe he would just be like, well, sorry, I got to go, because he's kind of that way. Amidala is nice enough to be like, oh, you know what? I'm going to go with you. That way you're not abandoning your post. You're protecting me. Frankly, it's a better place for her to hide out anyway. uh, And then we find out. I know I've been spoiling it, calling him Rocket Guy the whole time, but we find out that the bounty hunter was Rocket Guy. It was Rocket Guy the whole time. Uh, And by the way, his son, which he calls Boba, I noted that in my notes, uh, is a kid who knows how to handle a ship. This kid does not get in and go, whoa, I don't know any of these controls. He's like, I'm going to shoot the Jedi guy. Bang, bang, bang. I'm going to power up my dad's ship, and we are going to get the F off of this rainy planet and go somewhere sunny for once. Uh, Great fight scene. Uh, great ro- use of the rockets and the rocket malfunctioning and and then uh, Kenobi not being able to use his laser saber and then the rope going down and then the rope trick and the swinging and awesome and then of course the last minute Kenobi's like ah you have not beaten me yet I'll throw a tracer on you okay then we see uh we see Anakin and Amidala land on the desert planet right right into a spaceport apparently you can just land in a spaceport why they didn't do that in the last movie I have no idea, because if it was to keep themselves secret, going and wandering around on the desert planet telling everyone you need parts for your ship parked outside doesn't keep your secret very well. All right, desert planet, planet of the boring. Uh, otherwise, I love the planets. Uh, we're going to, into, they call it an asteroid belt. I think it's Rocket Guy actually calls it an asteroid belt. It's, it's a planetary ring. But I guess planetary ring didn't sound as good. So anyway, we go chasing through the planetary ring, through the ring fra- fragments. We get a cool battleground scene here. The seismic charges are awesome. They're sonic charges, really, not seismic charges, but okay. Uh, I like I like Rocket Guy's kid. He's clever. Uh, and it was a clever trick on Kenobi uh, to pretend like he got blown up. That was good. Uh, Federation is back. They're down there on the planet. Okay, so that takes us to the halfway point. 
Here's what I think halfway. The Federation secretly funded this clone army. That's why Rocket Guy's going back to the Ring Planet to meet the Federations. Uh, they hired an assassin to kill Amidala so that they could start a war and use the clone army, have a reason to use it. Uh, she's leading the efforts to make peace with the Separatists. Uh, the Federation are trying to get the Separatists on their side. And meanwhile, Special Boy, Anakin, Annie, whatever, has nightmares about his mom and is falling into a forbidden love. And so that's going to lead to something. Maybe maybe something bad for Amidala. That would, that would make it make sense. Uh, so the clone army is not the Republic's and will attack the Republic if Kenobi doesn't stop them. So he's got to he's got to figure out what's going on on the Ring Planet, and then stop the Clone Army. And then Amidala will have I don't know maybe a scandal uh, on for going to the Desert Planet. Maybe she'll get unseated and removed by love or something. Either way, we got a war and we got clones, and all the clones look like Rocket Guy. Okay, so mom mystery. We show up, and an old man in a wheelchair is like, well, your mom got hauled off a month ago by Raiders fans. Um, I don't know if they were Oakland Raiders fans. And he, um, and then he has a younger half-brother. I can't remember his name now, but he was, he was nice. He had a girlfriend. Uh, and so he takes off. Now, here's the one part where I want to start saying, like, look, Anakin, you just leave your charge. You leave the senator. You're going to leave her on Naboo. He's going after his mom. So in this case, if he hadn't been such a jerk up till now, I would have understood. Uh, really cool evening shots. Then we're back to the ring planet. Uh, the Federation guys are building droid army, which I'm not sure why they need that if they have the clone army. But okay, lots of armies. More armies, the better. Uh, and I don't know who those people are because they don't really introduce themselves, but they have a council of other people with techno things and all kinds of stuff, and they want to sign a treaty. Uh, okay, Desert Planet, not as boring as last time. Why did they take her mom? Kind of a mindless evil. I guess these are just mindless evil people. Uh, but of course, Anakin saves her, but too late. He gets to hear her say, she loves him, almost says that. Uh, and then he goes bad. He kills everyone. Uh, yeah, okay, so now I'm thinking, oh, maybe he is going to be a bad guy now, and Amidala will have to get away from him. That's why we've been seeing him be so creepy this whole time. All right, back to the ring planet. Uh R2 will get the message. Uh, oh, we're back to the ring planet quickly, but then really it's just so that we can see R2 picking up a message because Kenobi can't get his message boosted all the way to the capital for some reason. So he he looks for, for Anakin, finds out he's not where he's supposed to be. Uh, but Amidala is fine. Uh, so as R2's getting the message, we go back to uh, the farm. Amidala's fine. And Anakin's nuts. Um Boy, he just keeps ripping on Kenobi. Kenobi's not even there. And he's just like, he won't let me do anything. Uh, Anakin's a murdering psychopath at this point. Like, he just, he talks about killing children. And are you still interested, Amidala? I'm just asking. Like, uh, I hate my boss. Uh, my mom's dead and I killed babies. Like, that's not a guy you want to be with. But then, just as I'm thinking that, Anakin says, I know I'm better than this. A moment of self-awareness. Not sure, if maybe calling it there's hope for him. Uh, but he says, I won't fail again. So maybe he's going to stop being a jerk. I won't fail again. And in other words, he's and he's I believe that he's talking about the failure of losing his temper and <laughs> killing everyone. Still, I don't know if I'd give him that chance. All right, so we hear more about Count Dooku. We still don't know who he is. We're more than halfway through the movie. We haven't met the person introduced to us in the first line of the text. And uh, so Kenobi says, you need to pass this along. Oh, I'm in trouble. Uh, the Jedi Council sees it. They know he's in trouble. Anakin knows he's in trouble. And they say, no, Anakin, you need to come back to Coruscant. Well, of course he's not going to. Anakin doesn't follow any rules, except for this time, because he hates Kenobi so much, he won't even go save him. Thankfully, Amidala is the only one who ever does the right thing. Is like, no, we, we should go. I'm ordering you. Your job is to protect me, and I'm going to save Kenobi. And then Anakin gives a lascivious grin. Uh, 
so then the Jedi Council talks about using the clone army. I'm not sure. I mean, I guess they're just going to steal it. Senator Amidala opposes an army, though. But the Jedi Council is like, well, what we need to do is if Amidala were here, we could get her to vote powers to, to use the army. But she doesn't want to use an army. That was the whole point of this, this movie from the beginning, is that she had to be hidden from being assassinated because she was the one who could stop the war. But now they're like, we really need her here to start the war. Okay, finally we meet Dooku. Uh, Dooku shows up. Kenobi is, is, is imprisoned. And Dooku's like, oh, it wasn't me. This is madness. Maybe Dooku's a good guy. He knows about bad robe guy. He says Darth Sidious. Maybe this is the twist. The Separatists are the good guys. And I'm like, join him, Kenobi. Dooku's a former Jedi. Maybe he's good. Maybe the the Sidious thing is infesting the Jedi Council, and you should join up with, with. I mean, honestly, Dooku makes a lot of sense. That's all I'm saying. Uh, so then we go back, and Comic Relief gets the power to propose emergency powers. Misa opposed the Army Chancellor powers. Really? You give the fill-in representative guy? Okay, whatever. Um, and then... Uh, Amidala and Anakin take off uh, to go save Kenobi, except for some reason, the um, the robot guy <laughs> goes with them. I'm not sure why. I mean, we know Anakin built him from the last movie, but he didn't seem too concerned about taking him last time. Suddenly, he goes with him this time. Uh, Kenobi is on a planet we now know called Geonosis. I noted that. Uh, and the Jedi steal the clone army away from whoever originally ordered. The Kaminoans don't know. They think it was the Jedi the whole time, so I guess they can get away with it. it seems kind of shady to me. And then uh, and then we get a really good scene in the factory on Geonosis where they're building the robot's army. Uh, and I guess now they need the robot army because they don't get the clone army, apparently. And uh, there's some comic relief with the two other robots, with R2 and the, and the robot guy. Uh, which is okay. It's not much better, frankly, than than the the alien comic relief, but it's all right. But it's a really good obstacle course scene uh, with lots of gymnastics for both Amidala and Anakin. And it's not a da- I think I'm like, oh, is it going to be a damsel in distress thing? But it's not. She's got some fancy footwork. She's good. I have no idea why R2 pushed Robot Guy into the factory. That just seemed mean. That was mean spirited and unmotivated. But Anakin and Amidala uh, have some excitement. And then Rocket Guy is back. They're captured. And then they have a tender moment. And then Amidala, for some reason, says, I love you to Anakin. I think you're just stressed, Amidala. I don't believe you. I, I really don't. I have no, there, You have shown no reason. In episode one, there was tenderness for a little special boy. But that was kind of like a friendly sisterly thing. Uh, and then he's been nothing but creepy to you in this movie, and yet now you say, I love you. Okay. Instead of a prison on Geonosis, though, uh, they go Roman on people and put them in a coliseum full of winged creatures uh, and then send even bigger, nastier creatures at them to kill them. And look who's tied up to the other stick. It's Kenobi. And not a like, oh my gosh, we've gotten in this mess. We were trying to save you. It's bicker, bicker, bicker. These two do not like each other. Okay, maybe Dooku isn't good because he promises she will die. So unless he's really hiding something, it doesn't make any sense. He's bad. Uh, this place thing is all over the place. However, the battle scene with the monsters is pretty fun. We got a crab creature. We got a rhino creature. We got a little wolfy creature. Very John Carter of Mars. I get a very Barsoom feeling from from this. And then before this gets boring, because at first I'm like, oh, is this going to be like the pod race? Like kind of cool, but dragged out. No, nope. they cut it off quick. And the Jedi show up. And, and Samuel Jackson leads him in, and we got ourselves a good old-fashioned Jedi battle. We got people running with lightsabers. Uh, and Rocket Guy is killed by Samuel Jackson. Goodbye, Rocket Guy. And you get this great scene where his kid, uh, Boba, picks up the helmet. Oh, that's, that's nasty, because that. And then we get back to, you know, the Jedi get surrounded because the robots come pouring out of the factory because they had a big robot army. And Dooku says, look, you know what? Uh, Put down, Lay down your arms. We'll take you as hostages. Apparently they weren't doing hostages a minute ago, but that must have been the wing guys. Maybe Dooku isn't so bad after all. Aha! 
But then, next thing you know, this is an adventure. This is an action movie. This is like Transformers. It's just it's just about the fights. Don't try to make sense of the story, because uh, then Green Guy leads in the clones. Good rescue. Uh, they they have a big battle. Lots of shooting. Save the Jedi. Get him out of there. For some reason, I didn't even talk about the fact that his head came off and they had to get it back and it was on the wrong robot. Uh, these two are just left in the arena by everyone. I, I don't know why. Maybe we'll never see them again. That's not true. I know we see them again later in the movie, but still, it's kind of weird that they just leave them. Uh, and then on the transport, Kenobi says a nice thing to Anakin. I don't know what to make of that. Seems out of character. Uh, okay, so... Then Dooku is talking with the Federation guys and like, we have to get these plans. We have these secret plans that we can't let fall into the wrong hands. So uh, I need to take them back to Coruscant. What the? You, wh- that's the capital of the Republic that you're supposedly trying to leave. So you flee to the capital of the place you're trying. You want to keep these plans out of the hands of the Republic. So I'm going to fly back into the heart of the Republic. It makes no sense. Also, Dooku should have parked closer. I'm just saying. He had a long way to go to get to his ship. Think about that next time. Maybe the place was packed when he parked. You know how it goes. You probably, Sometimes you park far away, and then everybody leaves, and you're like, oh, well, is that, could I could park closer now. Uh, battle scenes are great, though. Uh, we got we got these clone army troopers going across. We got these little walking robot things. Uh, lots of cool ships. We get a little Federation starship pun in there. Uh, big balls of stuff floating up. Uh, good, good stuff. And then we're back to Kenobi and Anakin bicker and bicker and bicker uh, as they, you know, Anakin's like, oh, uh, Amidala fell off. We should probably go back and get her. Kenobi says, no, try to, your feelings betray you for wanting to pick up somebody who fell off something. Like, whatever. At this point, I'm just tired of these two. Get a room. Uh, get a sword battle with Kenobi in the part of the master now. Anakin is the trainee against the bad guy who's Dooku this time. It's a little reminiscent of episode one. So I'm like, uh-oh, are we going to go Qui-Gon? On Kenobi at this point? Is that what's going to happen? Dooku pulls out the red sword, so we know he's bad now. Uh, and he can shoot lightning from his fingers. That's freaking cool. Uh, I, I I think Horn Guy could do that too. Uh, but yeah, lightning out of the fingers. You can't, you can't you know, that's hard to fight. Uh, by the way, Amidal is fine. She gets up and is like, let's go to the hangar. How'd she know they're in the hangar? I don't know. Uh, next thing we know, Anakin loses an arm. Uh, that's not good. It does not look good for Kenobi. Dooku, though, I mean, honestly, the guy's not that bad. He doesn't kill him right away. He's like, oh, Kenobi can't get up. You lost an arm. I'm just going to take a breather then. Ah, but then Yoda. He calls his name Yoda, and I finally noted it. Yoda walks in. Like, what is this little guy going to do, right? He's just an old man. Uh Uh-oh, green guy is powerful. He's got lightning too. And then we find out Yoda trained Dooku. So it's a master and a former apprentice thing. Uh, Good light skills on this guy. He can wield the saber thing. That is amazing. But then Dooku forces the the, the choice. I'm going to either kill your friends or you can get me. You can get me in and your friends die, or you can let me go and your friends live. And of course, Yoda saves his friends. Uh, and Dooku flees to Republic headquarters, but okay, it's some weird red factory part, of course, and it's not the main part of Forest. And and, and Bad Robe Guy is there. So Bad Robe Guy is on, like the head of all the Separatists, the head of all the bad guys is on the same planet as the head of all the good guys. And he calls Dooku Lord Tyrannus. That means that Lord Tyrannus was Dooku. That means Dooku ordered Jango Fett to go to Kamino to become a clone army that they then gave to the Republic to use against them in the war that they just fought. I don't know. Amidala says, whew, all this fleeing around is done. I guess we've started a war. I can't stop it. I'm going back to Naboo for some unknown reason. And then Yoda says, begun. The Clone Wars have, and he's the only one who seems sad about it at this point. Like, ah, oh, this is not a this is not a win. We did not avoid a, roar, a war. So then we see like 
the clone army marching and all these big starships taking off battleships and they're playing ominous music and it feels like the Republic is bad, but we know the Separatists are bad. There are no good guys. There are basically no good guys, except for Amidala. I think that she's the only good guy. Uh, yeah, that's, that's about all I've got. Uh, and then I, I didn't think Jedi could marry, but who cares, right? Throw that one out too. And we get robot best man. Oh, and uh, Anakin's even got a robot hand. He's got a robot hand and robot friends. He's like, will you be my witnesses, robot guy and R2? So I was way more confused by this movie than episode one. At least episode one, I could see what was supposed to be going on uh, as we stumbled from place to place. This movie was better with action. It's a better action movie, but the plot makes no sense. Here's my best stab at it. Amidala, <laughs> I don't even know if I can do this. Amidala wants to stop an army been being for, formed and wants to stop a war and keep the separatists led by Dooku from seceding. So then Jango Fett tries to kill Amidala, which scares her off, uh, paving the way for war. Jango is paid by Doranis, turns out to be Dooku but hired to be a clone for the clone army that's then given to the Republic. In tracing Django, Obi-Wan discovers a secret army being bred for sifo who was dead, so it's not really for sifo We turn out it's really for Tyrannus, who's Kantuku. But no, Dooku got Amidala uh, out of the way and got the war he wanted. So I guess Dooku and Sidious just wanted a war, and they're like, well, they don't have an army. Well, let's give them an army, and then we can have a war clever plan meanwhile anakin and amidala fall in love for some reason that is never uh believable or truly relevant to the plot to be honest like they could not have had that love story it wasn't much of a love story to begin with and it did i mean except for the one point where he's like we should go back for amidala no we shouldn't okay fine uh so in the end we have the separatists at war with the republic both of them on coruscant unbeknownst to the other uh, or at least one, and uh, the Jedi now in charge of a big old army. So even though their magical powers are getting weaker, now they've got conventional powers to fight the Separatists. And there we go. That, my friends, is what we call Attack of the Clones. I am looking forward to episode three called Revenge of the Sith, and if uh, and, and the Sith was mentioned a couple of times in this movie, uh, in regards to the bad robe guy from Episode One, so I'm guessing that means Dooku, who is Tyrannus, is also a Sith, and so they're going to take their revenge on someone, probably the Jedi, since the Sith are against the Jedi. And that's Episode Two. All right. Well, thank you, folks, uh, for watching or listening. Do let me know what you're thinking uh, of this. If you think the concept is bad, just don't watch. That's fine. I don't care. Uh, but if you're like, hey, you know, what about this? What about that? Questions? Uh, I'd love to keep the conversation going. Pretending that I'm dumb about Star Wars. And, of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, youtube.com slash acedetect, uh, you can also find the podcast in audio form and subscribe to that at tommerritt.com. P-I-D-A-S-W. Uh, pretend I'm dumb about Star Wars. Thanks again to the Andrew Allen Trio. AndrewAllenTrio.com. I'll see you when I do episode three.